Today I am going to talk about the op amp integrator. Real quickly, what the integrator does is it gives us a voltage that changes linearly with time. So this horizontal axis is time, and this is voltage, and the integrator would give us a voltage that changes in a straight line, meaning that if we go one second, two seconds, three seconds, or milliseconds, or whatever it is, just equal intervals of time, one, two, and get that out of the way, three, we would go up equal amounts of voltage. So one, two, three, whatever, seconds, milliseconds, whatever. Let's say we're going up one, two, three volts, or one, two, three millivolts, or whatever. So uh, let's do millivolts and milliseconds. So one millisecond, one millivolt. Two milliseconds, two millivolts. Three milliseconds, three millivolts, so that it goes in a straight line over time, which could be useful for, well, off the top of my head, maybe a timing circuit where we get a linear relationship between our voltage and time. So we could have it uh, trigger something at a certain voltage over a certain time, and it could change linearly, so we don't have to do any fancy calculations to adjust that timing. Or, another thing off the top of my head, let's say you have a square wave generator, and you want triangle waves. Well, an integrator could be used to turn those square waves into triangle waves. So let's take a look at how the integrator works, and to do that, we first have to revisit the op amp current controller. So I have a video about that linked in the description below. And we'll take a quick look at that first. So here is our operational amplifier. I always like to draw it with the inverting input on top and the non-inverting input on the bottom. It just works well for me. And it's essentially just a non-inverting amplifier. In fact, that's all it really is, a non-inverting amplifier. Let's take a look at that. There's our input, there's our output, and let's make these resistors 1K each, 1 kilo ohm each. So now we have a series circuit here. Remember, the feedback loop is in series because there's only one current path. There is no current path into the op amp because the impedance is much too high. So any current has to go either out of the output to ground or from ground into the output, so it can source or sink current. And I'm going to put some power here. Let's make that plus 10 volts. And, and we'll make this minus 10 volts over here. So let's take a quick look at this circuit. Let's put one volt on the input and see what this does. Well, remember what an op amp does. It changes its output to whatever it takes to make the two inputs equal. So it, it's a smart circuit that monitors the inputs and adjusts the output to whatever it takes to make them equal. So we know if we put one volt in here, the op amp is going to see these two voltages are different and start adjusting the output appropriately until it sees the same voltage here. So now the question is, what voltage here is going to make that one volt there? And it's pretty easy to figure out because we have a series circuit here, two equal resistors. It's a voltage divider with two equal resistors. So we know that the voltage across the two resistors will be equal. And of course, these voltages must add up to the total voltage. So if we have one volt here, that's zero volts plus one volt, must have equal voltage across the resistor, so there must be one volt here. So we start with zero, go up one volt, go up another volt. That would give us plus two volts here, and there is our non-inverting amplifier. But now let's take a look at the current through it. Let's erase this just to reduce the clutter for a second. And what would the current be? Well, we can figure it out two ways. One, we have two volts here and 2K. 2 volts and 2K, that's pretty simple. A little Ohm's law tells us that that current would be 1 milliamp. So 2 volts, 2K, 2 goes into 2 one time, and these are thousands of ohms, so that would be 1 milliamp of current. But could we figure this out another way? Well, if we can figure out the current through either of these resistors, we know the current through both, don't we? Series circuit, current must be the same. So well, we do know the voltage across this resistor. There's zero volts plus one volt because that's right there. I can erase that because we have that volt right here. 
So there's one volt across 1K, one goes into one, one time, one milliamp. So I know the current through both resistors by knowing the voltage and the resistance here. So if I change, well, let's change this to 2K and see what happens. Is that going to change the current? Well, did I change the voltage and resistance here? Well, I did, except the op amp is going to compensate for it. So what the op amp is going to do is this voltage is going to go down a little bit, and so this is going to go up to compensate, and it's going to eventually reach 3 volts, because 3 volts here, 2K, 1K, that's going to be 2 volts across here, 1 volt across there, and eventually settle back down at 1 volt. So I increased this resistance, which should have decreased my current, but the op amp compensated by increasing the voltage here until everything was back in balance. And we still have 1K, 1 volt, therefore we still have 1 milliamp. Yeah, 3 volts, 3K, three, 3 goes into 3 one time, 1 milliamp. So what's happening? We find that the current is actually determined by this voltage, because that voltage is transferred over here by the operation of the op amp, and this resistance. So as long as this resistance stays the same, and as long as this voltage stays the same, we'll have the same current. So I can change this resistor to whatever I want, and I'm still going to get one milliamp. So now we need to look at how a capacitor charges under normal conditions. So we get rid of our current controller here and just go to our little test circuit to demonstrate how a capacitor charges. I'm going to simplify this one. I will leave out the switch that discharges the capacitor, and I'm going to make this 10 volts, and I will make this 1 ohm and 1 farad. We assume that this capacitor is discharged, so the voltage is the same on both sides, therefore 0 volts. Remember, voltage is a difference. So if I find two voltages that are the same, that means that there is no difference, therefore I put a voltmeter across there, I read 0 volts, so no charge on the capacitor. Now I'm going to flip the switch, and current is going to start flowing into the capacitor. The charge building up on one side is going to force current off, and so it looks like current's going right through. For every charge that goes in, another charge comes out. So it looks like a short circuit, but as time goes by, those charges start building up here. And so we start getting a voltage that starts to push back. So at first we get, in this case, 10 volts and 1 ohm. Remember, this looks like a short circuit at first. 10 volts and 1 ohm, whoa, we get 10 amps of current. Well, that might not be a practical circuit, but it does tell us what would happen. So we would at first get 10 amps of current, but as this capacitor charges, for example, when this gets up to 5 volts, well, we have 10 volts here pushing that way, and we have 5 volts here pushing that way. We have 10 pushing one, 5 pushing the other. That's a total of 5 volts, and so this is going to drop down to 5 amps. So as this capacitor charges, we're going to get less and less current through it, so what's going to happen? It's going to charge slower and slower. So the result is, if we look at the charge curve, this is time, and this is volts. Here's our 10 volts, and what's going to happen? Uh, let's give it some time constants here. So with 1 ohm and 1 farad, every second that capacitor is going to charge up to 63.2% of the total or what's left over. So after one second, it's going to get up to 6.32 volts. After another second, it's going to go 63.2% of what's left over. So what's happening? Notice I made a curve here. As it charges, it builds up voltage, which pushes back on the charging current. So it charges slower and slower. So it starts to slow down. After another second, two seconds now, it's going to go 63.2% of what's left over, approximately there. After another second, it's going to go 63.2% of what's left over, and eventually it's going to settle down very, very close to 10 volts. So there's our capacitor charge curve. And why does it charge as a curve? Because as it charges, it builds up voltage, starts acting like a battery pushing back on the current, so the current becomes less, so it charges slower, so it charges fast, not so fast, slower, 
and then eventually it's just slower and slower and it never really reaches 10 volts theoretically but after five time constants in this case five seconds with one ohm and one farad it gets to like about 99.5 percent and then after another time constant or another second in this case of like 99.5 something or other but near as makes no difference it is up to the 10 volts now so the capacitor charges with a curve uh, we could use this for a timing circuit or whatever but over time it charges at different rates could there be a way to make this charge at a steady rate well what if let's go back to our charging circuit here our little demonstration circuit the problem is that as this capacitor charges it builds up voltage and pushes back so it charges slower what if we made this a variable battery and adjusted it so that as this charged we increased the voltage to keep the charge current constant so let's start charging with let's say one milliamp well that capacitor is going to charge and push back and that current's going to get lower so why don't we crank up the voltage and make that continue to be one milliamp as this pushes back we just crank this voltage up more as this drops down we crank that up some more so what we have is a constant current now is there a circuit that could give us a constant current through that capacitor well how about that non-inverting amplifier let's draw that again and where do we get that constant current there's our input here's our ground and I'll, I'll draw this resistor in this time well once again let's say we have 1k and 1 volt which means the output's going to be whatever it takes to put 1 volt here so that we will have a constant current oh look at that of 1 milliamp through this resistor regardless of what that resistor is so what if we simply replace that resistor with a capacitor so now we have that constant one amp through that capacitor what's going to happen we're going to get some voltage out here that's going to cause that current to go through there uh, the capacitor is going to act like a normal capacitor it looks like a short circuit at first so that one milliamp is going to go right through it but now it's going to start building up charge pushing charge off the other side and it's going to start building up voltage but what's going to happen this voltage will continue to rise to whatever it takes to keep that constant one milliamp going through that capacitor so that capacitor is going to charge at the same rate constantly so instead of over time charging like that it's going to charge in a straight line so now we get that constant change over time where one millisecond we get one millivolt two milliseconds two millivolts if you need uh, actual numbers you can either well we could figure that out or we could look it up or whatever but anyway what's going to happen now is we get a constant change of voltage over time so we get that linear ramp so that is what the integrator does so if we start out with zero volts here of course we are going to have zero volts here and to make everything equal out it's going to be zero volts here so now I put one volt here and let's put some voltage here just to have something there let's make that plus 10 volts and we'll put this to ground we can make that zero volts with certain op amps um, like the 324 or the 358 and there are other op amps that are called rail to rail op amps where we can actually reach both voltages so I put one volt here it's going to put whatever it takes here to put one volt here and it's going to ramp up so it's going to start at zero and start ramping up and it will keep this voltage going up to whatever it takes to keep that one volt there so that will start charging up and charging up and charging up until it reaches that 10 volts and then it will level off and so that's why you always see this is what an integrator does it does that 
Well, it's going to charge up linearly until it reaches its maximum voltage. If this is a rail-to-rail op-amp, it can actually reach that 10 volts. Most other op-amps, it might be half a volt or so short, but that's the idea of what the integrator does. And so now, let's say I put a square wave into this integrator. And let's make this a negative voltage just so we can get a negative output. So square wave goes in and we're going to get a ramp up. And then when this goes down, it's going to ramp down. So it's charging this way, and then charging that way, then charging this way, then charging that way. In both cases, it stays a constant current. So it charges up, charges, discharges down or charges the opposite way. And so we put a square wave into here, we get a triangle wave out. Of course, we have to make sure that we don't have time for that to flatten out. So a little bit of a timing issue here. We don't want it to do this if we want a triangle wave. So we have to make sure that we don't give it time to top and bottom out. And then we end up with a triangle wave. Or we could use this as a timing circuit. Put some voltage here. Now it's going to ramp up. So I'm going to want this to go into some other circuit, another op-amp comparator circuit, and have that trigger at a certain voltage. Well, that certain voltage is going to happen after a certain time, and if we want to change that, it will change linearly. So those are the two uses off the top of my head for the integrator, is to either turn a square wave into a triangle wave, or to make a timing ramp to make linear divisions in time for some type of a timing circuit, but that is how it works. So the integrator is simply a current controller where we replace the load with a capacitor so that we get a constant current through the capacitor so it gets a constant charge rate until it tops out, and then we can use that for whatever we need to use an integrator for. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.